Hey, Jeff Carlisi here from 38 Special, and we're rocking it up right here with Traders Nation. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today Dan Villa. He's an expert in IRS procedure and an advocate for taxpayers' rights, plus book author of How to Win Your Tax Audit. Dan, welcome to Traders Nation. How are you today? I am well, Kurt. Thanks for having me. How are you? Oh, doing fantastic. Thanks. So look, we got big tech meets big government, all right? And it doesn't sound good to me if you ask me. How, how do citizens even have a chance up against these intruders? Well, the, the first thing you got to understand, uh, Kurt, is that is that there are so many rights that taxpayers have when dealing with the IRS. If you understand just a little bit about what those rights are, you can keep the IRS from running you over. Sure. The problem is people don't know what their rights are. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's fewer than fifty percent of the people out there, and this is per a, stu- a study that was done by the National Taxpayer Advocate a couple of years ago. Fewer than fifty percent of the people out there think they have any rights when you're dealing with the IRS whatsoever, right. Right. and only half of those people that think they know anything about their rights can't tell you specifically what the rights are sure so i mean we, we, if you don't know what your rights are you don't have any it doesn't make any difference what's written down on the paper Dan, it almost seems to me by design because people you know it's like taboo you don't talk about the irs you don't even want to talk to the irs you don't even want to you don't even want to look at the irs website you don't want anything to do with the irs so maybe is it because of, of, of that very nature people stay away from even thinking about the irs that they don't know what their rights are yeah, there's no question about it. There's fear and intimidation that surrounds the agency. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And in fact, in the book, How to Win Your Tax Audit, I got a chapter in there that talks about the specific tactics of fear and intimidation that the IRS uses. And I document about 14 specific ways yeah. that the IRS uses bluff and intimidation yeah. and misinformation and disinformation to get money from people they don't owe. And so we understand those techniques and you know how to push back against those techniques, you're not going to get run over. Right, right. All right. So. IRS is trying to come into the age of technology. Uh, certainly some of their stuff is antiquated. But you get into 2.0, if you will. Uh, back in 2013, under President Obama, the IRS uh, started working with a company called uh, Palantir, okay, in an effort to step up spying on taxpayers. Uh, what are the details surrounding this? Or do we know what they are? Well, yeah, we know some of the details. First of all, the IRS has got literally a river of data that's flowing into the agency. People wonder why they can't stop identity theft. Sure. There, there are literally trillions of bits of information that are flowing into the agency every year, and they've got this massive amount of data, this massive pool of data, yeah. and the question is how does the IRS assimilate it and use it for audit attack purposes? And that's where that's where this, uh, this Palantir company comes in. Yeah. They've been tapped by the IRS to build a database that will allow users to search, analyze, visualize, and interact with a wide variety of data sets and to be able to leverage that information and to use that information for analytics and for creating links and, pat- and, and establishing and understanding patterns and statistical behavior patterns Ooh. and so forth. And so what they want to be able to do is create this, this apparent disparate set of data and organize it into a constellation of information that IRS auditors and and, uh, and uh, tax collectors can use to track the actions and behaviors of American citizens to figure out, and this is what the key is, Kurt, the IRS thinks you're cheating on your tax return yeah. by hiding income, yeah. and they want to use this data to track that income. Right. Wow, that's, you know, that just blows my mind, all right? And, and, and it's, it, it was only a matter of time where they were going to come and use technology to go back and lean on taxpayers to try to find that. Can you um, imagine the ways and possibilities that the IRS are conceiving to be able to actually do that? They're going to be looking for different subject matter, uh, subjects, uh, content subjects where somebody cheating, somebody hiding money, um, all these different things. And this software that they're going to be developing with this company is going to allow them to do that? Yeah, no doubt about it. And not, and not just financial information. I mean, already the IRS has got tens of millions of tax returns every year, sure. billions of information returns, W-2s and 1099s, yeah. and those kinds of things. But now we're talking about their ability to tap into bank transactions, credit card transactions, debit transactions, phone records, emails, social media posts, Kurt. I mean, this goes on and on and on. Where is- and, and, and imagine... Yeah. Imagine this kind of. Go ahead. You, no, you go I was going to say, where's the where is the privacy firewall here, Dan? Well, there isn't one. There isn't. I mean, the privacy firewall is the Fourth Amendment. 
But the fact of the matter is that the courts of the United States have shot the Fourth Amendment down a long time ago when it comes to the IRS. And this is, this is the fundamental problem with the Internal Revenue Service, is every single rule of law, Kurt, that applies in every other area of government doesn't apply to the IRS, because the courts look at the IRS and say, well, wait a minute here. We need the money, and so we can't have these constitutional protections in place that would somehow hinder or slow down the IRS. we got to strip these constitutional protections away so yeah. that the IRS can rampage. Right. Um, let me ask you something. So during the health care act uh there was a provision in there in regards to enforcement okay um is was that just a ramp up to what we're seeing here now well in the health care act the enforcement part was with respect to the uh with respect to the uh uh, the uh, individual contribution or the individual mandate, yeah. which required people to have sure. to have uh, individual insurance, but but the but the Health Care Act actually specifically said that the IRS could not use any enforcement tactics to collect that individual mandate penalty. So that's something different from what we're talking about. Yeah, here but now. let me ask well, you though, who, wh- what act brought up? What act was it that brought up? Because I'm I'm naive to it. What act brought up the fact that they hired X amount of enforcement officers? Um, I thought that was built into the Health Care Act, where they hired X amount of officers to come in and enforce uh, certain provisions of that. I don't know. Well, 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 well you're, you're, you're generally correct, okay. because what happened under, under the Health Care Act, yeah. uh, the, the Affordable Care Act, which is, neither, uh, which is not affordable at all, as no. we all know, no, right. but, but uh, what, what happened under that act is, is the Congress delegated to the Internal Revenue Service certain elements of the enforcement of the act, all right? right, and, right, and, right. And, and never never mind the individual mandate for just a second. Yeah. But the IRS has to have the, the processes and paperwork in place to confirm that each individual has insurance. So okay. it's an IRS enforcement Okay. Uh, and, 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 and that had to be funded with some kind of resources because the IRS's resources, okay. of, course, is, of course, are supposed to be sure. dedicated to ca- tax collection. Right. So the more duties Congress gives the IRS, the more their workforce gets spread thinner and thinner. Okay. That's one of the problems with, with what's going on with the IRS today. All right, so I see the stark difference between that and what we're actually talking about here today, but nonetheless, it's leaning on the taxpayer uh, when it comes back down to the IRS. So let me ask you, um, is there any information that the IRS has that they, they really don't need or really supports their mission of taxation and revenue collection. Well, well, this is the problem. I mean, if you ask the IRS, they don't have enough information yet. <laughs> they want more and more every single year, Kurt. They go back to Congress yeah. and they say, we need more information. We need access to this data. We need access to that data. And as a matter of fact, in the IRS's strategic plan that was produced, uh, every five years they produce a plan. Yeah. And in their 1918, or, <laughs> 1918, their 2018 to 2022 strategic plan, yeah. they specifically set out the goal to become a data-driven agency. In other words, they're going to rely less and less on, on uh, information that's provided by the taxpayer and more and more on information that they get through third-party sources. Sure. And so as far as they're concerned, there's never going to be enough data in their hands. Right. Yeah, and the more the better. They, they've got to be green with envy with these big tech companies, you know, because everybody in their life is putting out all that private information voluntarily. I don't. But nonetheless, they've got to be green with envy when it comes to big tech. Well, well, no question about it. Not only are they green for envy, uh, green with envy, they're saying to themselves, "How do we tap into this stuff?" Yeah, and, th- and this is one of the elements of, of the uh, of the program that they're in the process of developing right now is to be able to take the trillions of social media posts, maybe not trillions, but there's certainly billions of social media posts out there, yeah. and tie those back to uh, tax return information and email records Crazy. and credit card data, and, and and you know, just for example, let me just give you an example. Well, how this actually, we're out of time, Dan. We're can we find you? What's the website? Yeah, the website is taxhelponline.com. It's all one word, no spaces. Taxhelponline.com. Head on over there today. We'll be right back.